In today's lesson, we're going to be working on writing algebraic expressions. We're going to be translating English into math. This can be found on page 166, 3.6 in your textbook, so you can follow along with me. The first thing in your notes that I want you to fill in, and you can see that your notes are blank for all of these symbols. What does the symbol or what words in English mean to add? So you might want to pause the video and copy all of these down, or if you can keep up with me, write them down as I'm saying them. So things that mean add in English. Well, add, the word add, plus, sum, combine, increase, more than, total, all together. Um, things that mean minus or take away, reduced, minus, subtract, decreased, diminished, difference, less. Now in blue you can see here that I have subtracted from less than, fewer than. The subtraction order counts. So words that mean just to subtract in that order, they're in black above the blue line. Words that mean subtract, but you have to reverse the order from the English, and you'll understand this as we go along, they are in the blue, subtracted from. Like 9 subtracted from 25 would be 25 minus 9. Less than, fewer than. Those order counts. Uh, subtraction is not commutative. Multiply words in English. Well, the word multiply, times, product, and distribute of some words that mean divide in English. Divide, quotient, share equally, cut, factor. So these four operations, there are more words that I'm sure that you might come up with one or two that I missed in the add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And I would love it if you would share those in class tomorrow. If you have more words than what I have here, Let's add to the list here for everybody, because we're going to have to take these words, these written English words, and translate them into these operations. That's what the lesson is about today. So beginning on page 166, you see this example where you're going to have to take apart the words and put it in or translate it into the algebraic expression. So we're writing expressions today not equations, no equal signs on these. Amy used two-thirds, two-thirds, number, key number there, of a ribbon that is y inches long to tie her hair. Write an algebraic expression for the length of the ribbon that she used. So Amy used a ribbon, two-thirds two of a ribbon, well there's the key word of, two-thirds of a ribbon that is y inches. So they're picking the variable for us. So she used two-thirds of y. That's the ribbon, two-thirds of y. So that's my algebraic expression, two-thirds y. Amy used two-thirds of a ribbon that is y inches long. Well, if I want to answer this correctly, I should put the label inches abbreviate it or write it all the way out, inches on it. So that expression, two-thirds y inches, matches this um, English verbiage here. So we're going to change English into mathematics. That's example one. Example two, a retailer doubles the value of a coupon worth T dollars. So key math words there, doubles. The value of a coupon on worth T, there's the variable, dollars, on a purchase of $15. Write an algebraic expression for the final cost of the purchase. So I'm purchasing something that's $15, and I'm handing the retailer, the person who owns the store, or the shop, or wherever it is that I'm getting my um, value here for my purchase. So it could be, you know, I'm going to the Redbird Market here in Fairport, and I'm buying $15 worth of some groceries. I hand them a coupon that they're going to double. 
Well, we know we hand them the $15, and they're going to double, that means times two, a coupon that's worth T dollars. Well, it doesn't say it's worth $1 or $2 or $3 or $5. It could be worth any one of those amounts. That's what T means. It's a variable. So they're going to double my T. So, and, when, and you know when you go to purchase something, you hand them the money, $15, and the cash register or the person at the register will double the coupon and subtract it from the money that you give them. So in the real world, that's how it works. That's how I'm going to get my final cost of the purchase. I give them the $15, they subtract twice of the value of the coupon, and I get my change. So that's the algebraic expression, no equal sign, that matches the cost of what was my $15, now subtracted by 2 times the coupon. Example 3. Seven sticks of clay are shared equally. Oh, shared equally. That's one of the words that we know that means division. Among 28 students. So that's a key number. Each stick of clay weighs C grams. Seven sticks of clay that are called C. So seven sticks of C grams, sticks of clay, C grams, there's my variable, and there are seven of them, seven C, are going to be shared equally, divided, among 28 students. My seven sticks of clay are shared equally among the 28 students. Write an algebraic expression for the weight of the clay that each student will get. Okay, well, if the clay, say it's 10 grams, 7 times 10, 70 grams divided by 28. What number is that? I don't know. I'd have to do that division. Say it's, you know, 4 grams grams. The clay weighs 4 grams. Well, 7 times 4 is 28 divided by 28. Each student would get 1 gram. I could figure that out by doing the division. So that's the algebraic expression to find the weight that each child would get because I'm going to divide by each. Another thing that means dividing equally, sharing equally, each student receives. So there's another key math word. So I want you to get used to marking up your word problems just like I'm doing here, underlining, looking for key math words, key numbers, um, things like that in the, in the um, English sentences. Example number four, a fruit punch makes seven quarts been made with our quarts of orange juice. So usually punch, it has more than one thing in it. It's just not all orange juice. It's orange juice, and seven up, and maybe some orange sherbet in it or uh, maybe it's got some ginger ale, or it's got some cranberry juice as well. So a punch usually is a mix of a lot of things. And it has our quarts of orange juice in it. So they're telling us the variable. This time it's being made with 30% less, ooh, percents, 30% less orange juice. Write an expression for the number of quarts of the fruit punch made this time. We're making less. Well, here's a little math note here, and remembering about percent. Percent is written as the percent symbol, which means out of 100. It can be written as the decimal 30%, 30 over 100, as the decimal 3 tenths. So I might be using that 3 tenths here, 30%, changing it to the decimal. Um, a fruit punch makes 7 quarts when made with our quarts of orange juice. So it starts off with 7. This time it was being made with 30% less, the math word there, orange juice. So 30% less orange juice. And orange juice are quarts of orange juice. So my orange juice is R. So I'm going to have 30% less orange R. So I would say that that's subtracting 3 tenths, 30 percent, are quarts of orange juice. It usually makes 7. I'm making 
30%, three tenths less our quarts of orange juice. Right? Our quarts of orange juice. So I don't know what else is in it, but I do know it's going to have less orange juice. Seven to start with, 30% less. That seems reasonable to me that I guess I'm going to take away three tenths R. James paid X dollars plus 3% tax for a pen. Write an algebraic expression for the amount of money he paid for the pen. Well, X dollars, there's our variable, plus 3% more. Well, 3%, that's 3 over 100, or 3 hundredths, the decimal, which is what I'm going to use. He pays X dollars plus 3% sales tax. So I know I'm going to have a plus sign. X dollars plus 3% sales tax. Well, 3% of that sales tax. For a pen, write an algebraic expression for the amount of money he paid for the pen. Um, well, he paid for the, whoops, for the pen. I should say pen. He paid for the pen. Um, these are like terms. That's not simplified. I can put these together. Remember, that's got a 1 in front of it. 1x plus 300 x My algebraic expression in simplest form, or simplified, would be 1 and 300 x It's like he's going to pay 103% for the pen. So we're all set. 103%. 1 and 3 tenths. 3 hundredths. 3 hundredths. Um, X. We can put those together. That's like terms. So we do need to simplify that there. And yes, when you pay 3% tax, you do pay 103% for that item. Seven watermelons each weigh W pounds. There's my variable. They don't always tell you the variable. In these instances, they are, though. Seven watermelons each weigh seven of those watermelons. The watermelons is W. Seven, there's a key number there. Seven watermelons each weigh W pounds. A basket can hold 11 pounds less than two-fifths of the weight of the watermelon. A basket can hold 11 pounds less than, ooh, less than, 11 pounds less than two-fifths of the weight of the watermelon, which is W. W is the pound. What weight can the basket hold? Seven watermelons each weigh W pounds. So I've got seven watermelons each weighing W pounds. A basket can hold 11 pounds less than. So it's not 11 minus this watermelons. It's watermelons minus 11. A basket can hold 11 pounds less than, minus 11, than two-fifths of the weight of the watermelon. Well, the weight of the watermelon right now is 7W. We've got to put two-fifths of that. Oh, multiply. Less than, order counts. It's not 11 minus two-fifths times 7W. It's two-fifths times 7W minus 11. Less than the two-fifths of the weight of the watermelon. What weight can the basket hold? Well, I can simplify this. Two-fifths times seven, that would be like two-fifths times seven over one. That would be 14 fifths. Got to bring that algebra, W, with it. Minus 11. Got to label this. Pound. Labels on those other ones? How much money? That's money. So this would be dollars, right? Did I put a label on this one? How many quarts of punch? Quarts. Label, label, label. Uh-oh. Got to go back and label everything. Write an algebraic for each student for the weight. So this would be grams. G is the variable that goes along with grams. Write an algebraic expression for the total cost. T dollars. 
Dollar signs come first, so I'm going to put that first. Inches. Oh, the first one I put the label on and then forgot after that. So, number two, dollar sign, go back and do that. Number three, grams. Number four, quarts, the expression for the number of quarts. you got to label it quarts. We're on word problems. Silly me. Dollars, number five, for the amount of money. So that's a dollar sign. Number six, pounds. Remember that one. Number seven. Oh, back to number one, I guess. The price of a ring was W dollars. Wendy bought it at a discount of 25%. Write an algebraic expression for the discounted price. Well, if you're going to pay W dollars, you go to the register and they take off the discount that's subtracted 25%. Well, that's the decimal 0.25. They're going to take off 25% of the cost of that ring, right? So W dollars minus 25% of those dollars would be the discounted price for the ring. Well, these, again, are like terms. I could put a 1 in front of that. 1 minus 25 hundredths, that's 75 hundredths W dollars. That's the expression that goes along with that. Or you could write the word dollars after, after the fact. Six N blocks of clay are shared among 14 students. Write an algebraic expression for the num number of blocks of clay that each student will get. Oh, we did one like this. Shared among, shared, division, 14. So six N shared among 14 students. Oh, 6 and 14. Now this one I can reduce. 6 and 14, we can factor this. Write an algebraic expression for the number of blocks of clay that each student will get. So I'm going to factor out our greatest common factor of 2, and I'm going to get 3n over 7 blocks of clay. How many number of blocks of clay? That many number of blocks of clay. 3n over 7 blocks of clay. Yeah, so it can reduce that one. So if we can simplify by putting like terms together or using our factoring, we're going to do that. Two more, guys. Two more. Um, Desmond has W marbles and Mandy has one half W marbles. Desmond gives one tenth of his marbles, which is the W. He gives one tenth of his marbles, one-tenth of dub of multiply W marbles. And Mandy gives two-fifths, so two-fifths of this one-half W, to their cousin Joel. Write an expression for the number of marbles that Joel receives. So Joel's getting them from both people. So we've got to add them together. They both give to Joel. So Desmond has W marbles and Mandy has one half W. So we start with Desmond's W and Mandy's one half W. Notice the space that I'm leaving there. And then it says Desmond gives one tenth of his. So we're only giving one tenth of ours away, Desmond. And Mandy gives two fifths of hers. So we've got some multiplying to do here in like terms. Write an expression for the number of marbles that Joel receives. Well, this is 2 times 2 fifths times 1 half. That's 2 tenths. We already have 1 tenth from Desmond. Desmond, this equals 2 tenths, this product here, 2 tenths W. So 1 tenth W plus 2 tenths W equals whoop, 3 tenths. I really don't want to put an equal sign because I don't want to confuse you. This simplified, because we're not writing equations, would be 3 tenths W Joel receives three tenths W marbles. Oh, that was a long one. I'm going to leave number four. Uh, we'll talk about that one in class. That's enough for today. Um, in class, we're going to be working on algebraic expressions.